beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is indeed the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Vanessa Semina and I would like to welcome you into the fam. So guys, I woke up this morning and made myself a nice little cup of matcha green tea with some vegan cream and I thought to myself, hmm, the unicorn fam needs an October relationship and situationship prediction. That way we can all sip on some piping hot tea together. So that is exactly what I have prepared for you today. These readings are specially designed for any of you who are in relationships or situationships to help you figure out exactly what's coming towards your connection during the month of October, what's going to affect it, how it's going to be affected, and what the outcome of your connection is going to look like. And these four groups are not just meant to be visually appealing, but they are definitely here to give you clarity as well as insight on your relationship and situationship status. Status. I'll be using a ton of different tarot and oracle cards, so get ready for a really exciting and detailed reading. But before I get any further into the video, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor. So I just kind of want to know where this relationship is going and whether... Oh just talking to my advisor on Keen. Today's video is kindly brought to you by Keen. Keen provides access to vetted psychics and spiritual advisors who can give you insight and guidance on love, relationships, as well as day-to-day -day situations in life. One of the things that I love most about Keen is the fact that psychics are available 24 seven. So no matter where on this beautiful planet that you live, there's always someone online with whom you can have your schedule meeting or a spontaneous one. And one of my favorite things about Keen is that it's one of the simplest and most affordable ways for you to meet new advisors. And once you've found an advisor who you really vibe with, you can set up monthly meetings in order to manifest, set your monthly intentions, and of course gaining clarity on the synchronicities and reoccurring symbols in your day-to-day -day life, as well as scheduled sessions for chakra clearing, are all great ways in which Keen Keen can help support your spiritual well-being. And as a new Keen customer, you can receive your first 10 minutes for only $1.99. Prices then vary from advisor to advisor depending on which advisor that you choose to connect with. But thankfully on Keen, they have advisors for every budget. Their services are also all backed with a satisfaction guarantee. So make sure that you use my link down below in the description box in order to receive your first 10 minutes for $1.99. And, 99 cents. and once you've become a Keen user, Keen sends you different offers every week in order to get your readings at the most affordable rates. That way you can receive multiple readings without breaking the bank. So don't forget to use my link in the description box to get your first reading for $1.99 and a big shout out and thank you to Keen for sponsoring today's video. So the four groups that I have prepared for you today are as follows. Group number one corresponds to the Tazima African Tarot deck as well as the Shadow Angel Aura Crystal. Group number two corresponds to the messages from your Animal Spirit Guides Oracle cards as well as the Celestine. Group number three corresponds to the Pink Pain Tarot deck as well as the Amethyst. And group number four corresponds to the Shamanic Medicine Oracle deck as well as the Orange Calcite. But as usual, the timestamp to all four groups can be found down below in the description box as well as pinned to the comment section. That way all you need to do is click your corresponding timestamp and you'll be fast forwarded to the relevant part of your prediction. So I will now provide you with a little moment of privacy. Feel free to pause the video right here if you would like to meditate on the four groups. Either way, I'll speak to you momentarily. So at this point, you've hopefully been able to pick one of these four groups intuitively. I always recommend for you to just go with whichever group that you feel represents a relationship that you would desire. I will be starting the readings off with the first group, which corresponds to the Shadow Angel or a Crystal, as well as the Tazima African Tarot deck. So if this is the group that you chose, you can simply continue watching. And to all of my other lovely groups, I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. 
Hello, group number one, and welcome to your reading. You chose the Tazima African Tarot deck in conjunction to the Shadow Angel Aura Crystal. Let's do a quick close up of the stone just so you can get acquainted with its energy and vibration. This is a stone that is actually dyed, group number one. So underneath, we have a quartz cluster, and it has this beautiful electroplating on it that gives it its very unique coloring. So these stones are pretty rare and hard to find. I'll leave the link to it down below in the description box while I move into your reading. Furthermore, ensure that you watch your October zodiac signs horoscope that will be posted either the same day as I'm posting this relationship prediction or a day after. Just make sure you look out for that on my channel. But let's move straight into your reading to see what's coming towards you. We have the nine of cups. So in the nine of cups, I can definitely see here that you're feeling Feeling pretty good during the month of October. Your relationships are treating you fairly well. And in the Nine of Cups, I can see that there isn't really much that you could ask for. There isn't really much that you could wish for. The Nine of Cups is a really favorable card. This is a card that shows that manifestation is possible as well. So your relationships are starting off on an amazing note. In the Three of Swords, I can see that while you're doing really well, someone may feel a little bit abandoned by you. Someone may feel Feel a little salty about the fact that you're doing so well in your relationships. So this could be a jealous ex, this could be a jealous family member, just overall someone who is thinking about your situation a lot and who for some reason just can't be as happy for you as many others in your life. I can see here within the six of pentacles that sharing is caring, group number one, and it's essential for you to ensure that you're giving other people the time of day and that you're giving other people a little bit more of yourself during the month of October. I see that that will really help you in your manifestations. I see that that is something that will create wonderful energy surrounding you and your relationships or situationship as it just shows what a benevolent and caring person that you are and the fact that you don't always put yourself first. You try to make time for others as well. And whenever you give and whenever you you show that you are a graceful person. That is definitely behavior that channels extra positive energy into your life and your relationships and can help further protect you from anyone's thoughts that are less than kind or less than friendly. So definitely do know here that while there is definitely someone who is looking out and waiting for you to make a mistake or waiting for something to go wrong in your relationship or situationship situation, uh, you can definitely combat that by putting out more good energy and not even paying any mind to this person. I can see here within the Nine of Swords that there is definitely some jealousy that is surrounding your relationships during the month of October. And I see here in the Nine of Swords that this person doesn't want to lose you they don't want to lose the power that they felt they had over you or your mental state. They don't want to lose the influence that they felt that they had over you, group number one. So this is definitely a situation that I would recommend you look out for and you ensure that you stay far away from anyone who you feel is even in the slightest jealous of your situation or jealous of where your relationships are or the fact that you even have a relationship or situationship to talk about. In the Six of Swords reversed, I can also see here that when it comes to friends and family who truly care about you and who are happy for your success, who are happy for your well-being and just want to see you happy, whether that is with another person or alone, you are definitely in a space where openness is going to pay itself off greatly. As in connection to the Six of Pentacles, I can see that opening up is actually going to make those people closest to you love you so much more because it just shows that you're able to be vulnerable and that you trust them and that you're not afraid that they're going 
going to tell your secrets to someone else or that they're going to know your fears or know your weaknesses and run with them. So it definitely shows a great deal of personal strength. The Five of Cups here does show me that for some reason, even though everything is going really smoothly and amazingly well for you during the month of October in your relationships and situationships, you may still feel a little bit alone or a little bit depressed. I see that here with the Five of Cups and the Nine of Cups that there is a bit of a moodiness that's going on. Now, October may be laced with some other memories or some other dates that remind you of things in your life that kind of drag your mood down a little bit and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your relationships, but it's still a part of your life and therefore it affects your mood because you are, of course, like one being that is connected to their relationships, to their work, to their personal life, to friends and family. So if one area of your life is doing really amazingly well, which we do see here, your relationships, your situationships, um, that doesn't mean that if another area is kind of struggling to keep up that it won't affect your relationships and situationships but it's important for you to be open that's one thing that we have as a divine message for you group number one straight from the universe straight from your guides and your angels when you're going through something or when you're feeling down open up about it be open to your partner be open with the person who you're seeing whether you have been in a relationship for years or a long time or whether this is a situation ship that you're still figuring out be open about what you're going through and how you're feeling that is the best way for you to preserve good conversation openness honesty and loyalty and that way you also know that you did everything that you could no matter what happens in your relationship you know that you were open and honest, direct and blunt, and you weren't hiding anything. So it's very important for you to keep that type of energy going because people can feel when you're keeping things to yourself, especially when it comes to romantic partners. Energetically, they will feel that something is off and you definitely want to avoid them starting to think that you're maybe seeing someone else or that you're hiding something really big from them when maybe you're just going through a tough time in your career or with another person and that is actually what has been on your mind. Definitely ensure that you don't let any doubts fester within your relationships and situationships. Be open about what you're going through because that clarity will actually help strengthen your relationships. I can see here with an opportunity that just as we were talking about with clarity strengthening your relationships and opportunity, it is very clear that that actually opens up an avenue and a path to deeper understanding and a path to just this deeper connection within your relationship that you didn't have prior to opening up about what you're going through. So opening up just comes with so many benefits, so many amazing things that will affect your relationship positively, that it's really just a win-win for you to continuously be honest and continuously open up to your partner. In happiness, I can see here that October is filled with a feeling of being together, of being one, but at the same time also having your separate lives and your separate issues and that being okay because you're kind of riding those waves together. You're going through the ups and downs, the ebbs and the flows of life together rather than you being on one wave and then being on the other. So almost like you're these two cute little dolphins. <laughs> Leave a dolphin emoji down below in the comment section. If you know what I mean, group number one, you know, on this channel, we can get a little silly. We can use some metaphors, um, but I think you always kind of get what I'm saying and you get what I mean. And in happiness, I can see here that you're depicted in a relationship where you're moving in the same direction together and you're on the same wave on the same lane and you simply get one another it is an energy that is unmatched and that just doesn't lie i can see here within forgiveness that a big aspect of your october 
love life and situationship is to forgive past lovers or past people who you are in a situationship with. And sometimes it can feel like we're alone in situationships, especially when you're interested in someone and that person is kind of playing games or maybe ghosts you every now and then. It can be hard to forgive because you're actually mad at that person. Even if you've moved on, even if you're now seeing somebody else, it can be hard to get over that because of course it is a big bruise to the ego. It is very hurtful to be ghosted and to feel like someone just left you like on the boardwalk on the side of the road and it took off. Uh, it is definitely something that is not so easy to get over and not feel resentful about or not still feel some sort of anger or even hate towards those people. But I can see here in forgiveness, as well as the nine of swords and three of swords, that it's best for you to simply try to get over what the past has shown you about people in love and situationships, which may have not always been the healthiest or most positive of experiences and just understand here that by holding on to that you're actually just continuing the cycle of negativity or of unhelpful emotions rather than cutting them off and nipping them in the bud and remember here that some people also do not realize when they're hurting others or they're just so busy with their own stuff their own wants and needs that they just completely fail to see how they may have hurt you and i can see here in the three of swords as well as the nine of swords and us talking about how there are some jealous people around you you may not even notice that they're jealous for a very long time you may not even be aware of the fact that some people are resentful towards you and your relationships and situationships in October. So that is where it's important for you to not hold grudges because that person with whom you're holding the grudge is maybe not even aware of the fact that the grudge is there. So next up we have the fennel. Yes, you're gonna have to be strong group number one. There's no other way to say it. You know that on this channel, I like to just tell you how it is. I don't like to sugarcoat things. I don't like to uh, kind of make anything too sweet, if you will. I just like to tell you exactly what the cards are saying. And in the fennel, I can definitely see that in order to ward off any type of unwanted energies and emotions, you will have to be strong. So we have a few cards that popped out of the pile. We are, of course, going to read them, group number one. This would not be a Vanessa Samina prediction if we did not read the cards that were so temperamental. So first up, we have the carrot. In the carrot, we have this notion of clarity. Clarity is something that we spoke about in you being open and you ensuring that you're being very honest with your partner and that leading to happiness. The grape does also show me here that your love life is filled with abundance and abundance and opportunity, those are things that go hand in hand because when you're able to see opportunities for what they are, you're able to also see abundance, but you have to be very open for that. You have to be open-minded, okay? We we have the tomato as well as the thyme. So the tomato shows me that love is present for you in October. We've already established that. We've already established that during the month of October, you are in a good place with your relationships and situationships. And in the time, you're going to have to be a little bit courageous and a little bit stronger than usual. We already spoke about in the fennel how strength is important, but now let's really get down to the nitty gritty of what your strength is all about during the month of October. It's all about being strong enough to open up, to be vulnerable, to be honest, to say what you're going through, how you're feeling, and all of the areas of life that are affecting you in a positive way, but also in a way of causing more struggles or causing a bit more of a challenging time. Being completely open and transparent with a romantic partner. It's definitely not an easy thing to do, but it is so necessary for you, group number one. So if you're someone who sometimes shies away from telling the truth and sometimes even tries to like comfort the other person with a teeny weeny little lie instead of telling them the truth, group number one, we're not calling you out in a like negative sense. We're calling you out to ensure that you know it's best for you to not even do that. Don't make yourself uncomfortable. Don't make the person believe in a teeny weeny little lie that you know doesn't hurt anyone, but at the same time, it's not as good as telling the truth. So just tell the truth. Of course, you can try and tell the truth to a partner or someone who you're with in a way that will affect the relationship in a positive manner. Like for 
example, if you feel like an ex is still bothering you or if you can feel that a friend or a family member just isn't happy for you, don't go and bash them in front of your partner or the person who you're in a situationship with. But talk to them about it and say like, hey, I'm kind of going through this thing and I'm not sure how so-and-so feels about me, but they're kind of displaying some behaviors here that I'm just not really a fan of that just show that they're maybe not as supportive of me and my choices in my life as I thought that they were. And that includes love. What do you think? So make it a very productive thing while still keeping it real and being very honest and put a spin on it that is diplomatic and honest. Next up, we have the aragonite. Oh, the release group number one. This is just going to let you let go of so much emotional baggage that you were holding on to for so long. It's going to feel good being this honest. At first, it will be hard. At first, it will be scary. It will be daunting. I'm not even going to lie about that. It's definitely going to be difficult to do it, to get yourself to that point. But once you have gotten over the hurdle, once you have taken the leap of faith, oh, group number one, you are going to thank me, your guides, the universe, for this courage, for the strength to be honest and open about what you're going through in other parts of your life with your partner, as that will just make you feel so much better to have gone deeper as we have here in the epidote. The epidote is a crystal and a mineral that encourages all participants to go beyond the surface, to go way deeper than they usually would. So and no more skimming the surface or just saying, yeah, I'm kind of okay, group number one. And no, go into great detail about what you're feeling, what you're going through, why you're feeling a certain way, and how you could potentially feel better. Next, we have the tourmalinated quartz. Get out of your own way, stop overthinking. That is one of the most important things that I see here for your relationships in order to affect your relationships and situationships positively during the month of October and in order for you to just quit overthinking things, group number one, especially if you're a notorious overthinker and a bit of an undersharer, if you will. Like you may talk about everything under the sun, but your feelings. And that is where I see here in the tourmalinated quartz that you have to break through the protective barrier that you may have built over the years the walls that you may have put up for good reasons, but sometimes those need to come down. In the red jasper, taking action is an important part of October for you and being the first one to bring things up, being the first one to strike up a conversation. But we've put you on the hot seat for long enough now, <laughs> group number one. Yes, be open, be honest. That is the gist of October for you. I hope that you can appreciate these messages and I hope that you're definitely going to hold yourself to that standard of honesty and openness for the good of it all. Then we have the sun. Okay, on a way lighter note, the sun is one of the most favorable cards of the tarot. So out of all 78 cards that we have here, you receive the sun, group number one, and the sun shows you having a good time basking in light, joy, happiness. Just overall, as we said, we're moving into a bit lighter territory of your October prediction, a bit more of a fun and open territory. So that is exactly what the sun stands for and just allow yourself to also have a good time. Don't feel like October has to be so serious or just full of like real talks. October is definitely a very favorable month for your relationships and situationships, and you will be having a good time while the core of the conversations will be very deep and will be very honest. Wow, the 10 of cups, such a positive card. This is actually the most positive card that you can receive about love, that you can receive about relationships and situationships. So literally, right as we said, we're moving on to a more lighter note. We're taking you off of the hot seat. We're moving back to how October generally is like for you in your relationships and situationships, and it's highly positive group number one. The cards don't lie, energy doesn't lie, your guides are here to communicate that with you and give you strength, give you the push to feel like, yes, you know what, October is going to be a very positive and prosperous month, and I look forward to that. So we're gonna do a few charms for you, group number one, just to get a few more details out of this. Okay, so we have glasses, we have the sun, 
sun as well as the star. So the sun I'm going to just immediately put over here on the sun tarot card because well that kind of goes without say the sun is being reiterated through your charms in the glasses I can definitely see here that it's important for you to see things clearly right to not keep any secrets to be very honest and to be outspoken about what you desire and what you're going through and in connectivity to the star I do want you to know here that the only way how there is hope for a relationship to last for a very long time and I'm talking a lifetime decades years is for you to be clear on what you want what you're going through and how certain people in your life are making you feel so be very direct group number one that is the main message for you and allow your love life to unfold as it should and as it will because your relationship and situationship life life during the month of October is phenomenal so group number one if you made it all the way to the end leave a sun emoji down below in the comment section to let me and others know feel free to also comment what hit home for you what you're looking forward to thank you so much for sharing this divine time and space with me and I'll catch you during one of my upcoming predictions Hello group number two and welcome to your October relationship and situationship reading. You chose the messages from your animal spirit guides, oracle cards, as well as the Celestine. Let's do a quick close up of the crystal of your choice just so you can get acquainted with its energy and vibration. So this is the Celestine. It is a absolutely beautiful baby blue crystal. This must be one of my favorite crystals, honestly. And this crystal is said to be super calming, super anxiety relieving. So if this is a type of stone that you chose, do know that you may have felt drawn to it because of its energetic qualities. Now let's move into your reading in order to figure out exactly what's coming towards your love life during the month of October. So where are your relationships and situationships going? We have the boar, also known as the pig. So first off, I can see here that you're facing your problems head on with confidence and courage, and you will emerge victoriously. So any type of situationship or issue that you may have within your love life, within your relationships, they are going to be solved. You're going to be able to emerge out of the situation, feeling like you got somewhere, feeling like your relationships are better at the end of the month of October, but it's definitely important for you to also know that part of that is you facing your problems head on, you being confident, you being courageous, and bringing up when something needs to be spoken about. There's no other way that you will emerge out of this victoriously other than you being courageous enough to speak about it, bring it up, and put in that energy and effort to bring to light what has to be discussed. Next up, we have the grouse. So in the grouse, I can see here that expressing yourself through rhythm and movement is another way how your relationships can thrive and benefit. So rhythm and movement is something that you can experience through singing, dancing, just overall doing something with another person where you're moving your body. You can also go do some sort of team sports together for example, I'm just about to go play tennis group number two with my husband and that's something that we like to do in order to get moving and in order to kind of like feel each other's rhythm, right? Feel each other out and see where we're at energetically. Sometimes it's just best to do so by getting physical rather than speaking. So next up, we have the mountain goat. In the mountain goat, I can see here that something was out of balance in in your relationship and situationship, which is why you have to face these problems head on. And whatever you need to do to correct it, that is what you're doing during the month of October. I see that with the mountain goat and the boar. The boar is basically already the outcome, the result of you facing your issues or your problems in your relationships head on, whereas the mountain goat speaks of something being out of balance, something needing to be fixed, and you having to deal with that ASAP during the month of October. So there's definitely some work that needs to be done from you, group number two, but it's okay because at the end of the day, as long as you are committed, things will turn out just fine, actually a lot more favorable than fine. Next up, we have the Mario Ram. So in the Mario Ram, we have happiness, 
as I literally just mentioned to you, things will turn out a lot better than just fine. They will be really great and happiness is the result of you facing these problems or the things that are out of balance head on and not being afraid to make them a topic of conversation. The bay shows me here that wisdom is what you're going to gain by the end of October. A lot of added wisdom in your knowledge about how to thrive in a relationship, how to to even have a happy, healthy relationship and how to ensure that communication channels remain open with your partner, that communication remains something that is easily accessible at all times. Because sometimes when we're going through a rough patch or when we're going through something with our partners, it can be hard to open up. It can be hard to speak to the other person if you know that the whole energy and the whole vibe is a little bit of a off-putting type of energy, is a little bit of an energy that is accusatory or that is defensive or that is just overall a bit secretive. So it's very important for you to take all of these lessons with you from October throughout the rest of your relationship life. Next we have the apple. So continuance is basically a better word for what I just described to you. The universe is really just speaking straight through the cards and I am definitely picking up on these energies before we're even laying the cards group number two, which is really great. We are super connected to your guides. Continuance is a better way for what I just described with taking the wisdom with you, even moving forward from your current situationship, from your current relationship into the future. And you know, maybe you will have more relationships in the future, maybe not, but either way, bring this continuance of wisdom with you and allow that to be a part moving forward with the person who you're seeing right now, but also it be a lesson that you can bring with you should you decide to move on from this relationship because we never know how things are going to change years or decades down the line. Next up, we have the Rado cross -Eye. The Rado cross -Eye shows me here that remembering your worth is an important part of October, especially if you have kind of forgotten about the importance of your self-worth, the importance of self-love, taking care of yourself, giving yourself time to chill, to do things that you love. It can be so easy to forget that, especially in this day and age where there's always so much going on. And with so much going on, I mean so much going on that does not feed us, that does not nurture our souls, that does not make us feel like we are well taken care of. So the Rota cross site definitely is speaking directly to you group number two and telling you hey remember your worth and remember that you're worthy of for example buying these high quality ingredients and cooking yourself a beautiful meal and just making a whole night about you remember your worth and the fact that booking a massage or booking a facial is something that you are so worthy of you don't have to first earn it you don't have to first do something to prove that okay now you deserve it no just by existing you are deserving of love you're deserving of care you're deserving of treating yourself you don't have to prove yourself first i can see here within the carnelian group number two that feeding your creativity is a great way for you to also remember that when you're in a creative state when you're in a flow state that is when everything kind of clicks for you you're the type of person who is really good when they're just immersed in a topic or in a subject all by themselves without having anyone interrupting or interfering with your flow state and that is when you come to a lot of epiphanies and realizations and in connectivity to the rado cross eye i can see that that is when you'll have your big aha moment your illumination in october about hey maybe because i haven't been taking as much care of myself as I probably should or as would probably be healthy for me. Maybe that has also been affecting my self-worth and my confidence around my partners, around my situationships. And that is maybe something that is out of balance as the mountain go goat describes that I have to bring back into balance. And no matter how I need to do that, it has to happen. So that is a type of epiphany that I see here coming for you and that I see that October brings. And you may have to first take a little bit of time away from relationships 
relationships and situationships to take care of yourself to then re-immerse yourself back into the relationship back into the connection with more ambition with more drive with more time with more energy and love than you had to begin with than you had to start the epidote shows me here that october is by no means going to be a month where you're just skimming the surface october is definitely a month where you're going a lot deeper with yourself as well as with your partner so you'll have very deep conversations you will speak about things that are bothering you you will speak about things that are not quite in balance or not quite where you would like them to be in the relationship and you're definitely going to be facing things head on as we spoke about within the bore and we mentioned how important that that was in order for you to emerge out of October feeling like October was actually a good victorious month and you got somewhere within your relationships. You grew in some way, shape or form. In the Iolite, I can see that shifting your money mindset is another thing that's going to happen for you in October. And what does this have to do with your relationships? Well, shifting your money mindset is something that you can do with a partner. It's something that you can do with another human being who you are in a relationship with and I do want you to know here in the eye light that this is actually a very important topic of conversation. I mean most relationships that fail fail because of financial pressure, financial dishonesty and just people overall having this pressure that they are often unable to talk about because of some sort of feeling of guilt or shame. But I can see in the eye light that you're both shifting your money mindset and you're not allowing money to be such a taboo topic anymore just because you understand that in order for a relationship to work and to have longevity issues surrounding money need to be discussed they need to be faced head on and they definitely need to be normalized because there are so many relationships where people feel like speaking about money is something that isn't classy or is somehow wrong or it feels icky they don't want to be honest they don't want to face the music but then in the end that ends up dismantling and destroying the entire relationship because now there are trust issues that are hard to get over because money is an important part of our lives. If you're watching this video, then you have access to internet and you're most likely living in a part of the world where the only way for you to survive or to have a roof over your head to have access to internet is through having some sort of financial funds, some sort of access to money and spending that on things accordingly, right? Prioritizing, for example, having an internet connection. So in the Iolite, you are both shifting your money mindset. You're both kind of speaking about what is essential to spend money on and what isn't and you're trying to get on the same page about finances that is one thing that i can see here that is important and coming towards your relationship during the month of october group number two so get ready for that and know that this is definitely a very healthy positive way to be so next up we have a new earth in a new earth i can see here that things are happening in a big way okay so it's like the relationship is going to take on a completely new dynamic and feel as you start to realize what type of money mindsets and beliefs that your partner or the person who you're in a situation with has and what type of beliefs that you have what you grew up with because often money habits are passed down from our parents because that's who we like learn our first money habits from that's the type of world that we live in if your parents mismanaged the finances then you were the victim of it because you felt it because without any financial means you were maybe not able to do certain hobbies and things that you wanted to do but if you're parents always manage their finances smartly or they were fortunate enough to be in an economic situation where maybe money wasn't so tight then you probably also felt the outcome of that because you were able to do more things than people who were in the less fortunate situation so either way you're coming to these epiphanies and realizations about the fact that you have a money mindset that you have also in a way learned from generational curses or generational abundance that has been passed down to you to depending on which side of the spectrum you're on, maybe you're right down the middle and you will also realize that whoever you're dating, whoever you're seeing has certain beliefs about money and has grown up in a way that has most likely affected them. Yes, you can unlearn money habits, especially the bad ones are important for you to unlearn, but it is not an easy thing and it's something that you're both going to have to work on and support each other with. I can see here in the double mission that you're definitely 
definitely a light worker star seed group number two those are the type of vibes that we're getting from you during the month of october a light worker is someone who definitely works to create a more happy light-hearted compassionate world on planet earth and a star seed is someone who kind of never quite felt like planet earth was home someone who knows that their home is somewhere in the stars that they are a mystical being that maybe does not quite belong it's like you have a mission here on planet earth to bring light to bring more compassion happiness and positivity but at the same time you don't feel like this is your forever home you kind of feel like you belong somewhere else it's like nowhere you go quite 100 percent feels like home and that may also be because home is actually with a person or home is actually a feeling that you have once you are taking care of yourself more appropriately oh okay we have two cards that the universe wants us to speak about we have the blue flame as well as loosening your grip so in the blue flame i definitely want you to know here that some epiphanies and aha moments are guaranteed during the month of october for you we already kind of spoke about this a little bit and how through activating openness about finances you are able to have some epiphanies about yourself but also about your partner and things that you maybe never quite realized or never quite noticed about how their upbringing affected how they handle their earthly abundance how they handle their finances and in loosening your grip i can see that kind of letting go of set ideas and ideals that you grew up with is a great way for you to actually propel yourself into learning new things for the future and to pass down to the next generation and by learning new things i mean good things things that allow you to loosen your grip on old-fashioned ways of dealing with money of dealing with finances because as things change with technological devices with the way that we do things like being able to order something off the internet and that showing up in some countries and cities within hours of ordering it that is such a difference than having to plan or schedule a time to go into a shop. So as our spending habits change, we also need to kind of change how we budget and how we handle our finances and how that affects our relationships and who has what responsibility in the relationship with money group number two. So I can definitely see here that you are taking earthly abundance and earthly matters head on in your relationships. You're taking these big topics on and this is something to be proud of because a lot of people fail to do so and then the relationships just kind of crumble or fall apart in a really ugly way i can see here within the ace of cups that you're finding a new sense of love and a new sense of just adoration for one another during the month of october because of this courage that you have and because of this display of care that is not just the usual I love you's or hugs or whatever other display of affection, but it's actually caring so much about the relationship that you are diving deeper, that you're going deeper as we spoke about in the epidote and you're bringing up things that could break the relationship if they are not spoken of. So the Ace of Cups definitely shows me a new love language that is emerging between you and your partner that focuses on understanding that some people's love language is to problem solve before the problem occurs. Some people's love language is to prevent issues from happening and just do all of these little things or talk about these little things that nobody wants to talk about in order to ensure that the relationship never hits a rocky path. I can see here within the nine of cups that when it comes to your happiness overall in your relationship, this is going to feel really fulfilling to be with someone who actually does in the end show appreciation. So at first they may not want Want to talk about these things at first they may try to kind of avoid the conversation but i see here in the nine of cups that they will definitely come to their senses and tell you in the end like hey thank you so much for talking about this for being courageous for standing up and for preserving our relationship the chariot shows me here that by the end of october 
you're going to be on a clear path and understanding about where the relationship is going, where the finances are going. Maybe you have even made a plan on how to save, on how to plan for the future, on how to ensure that you have enough financial means with one another moving forward. And in the chariot, it does definitely show me here that because you're all on the same, well, all, I mean, both of you are on the same page, um, you are able to actually work towards bigger, greater goals together, such as purchasing property together, maybe starting your own business, going on vacations, going on trips, things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do unless you started to talk about finances and became financially literate together. The Ace of Pentacles shows me this new beginning. So the cards are really just kind of, how should I say, the cards are speaking after we receive the message, right? We have a very clairvoyant moment today for me, group number two, and I hope you can appreciate that the cards are actually just always confirming the next topic that we're going into. So allow these cards to be a confirmation of the messages that we're just receiving, even without any tarot or oracle cards needing to be present. The Ace of Pentacles is a new beginning financially, and that just makes complete sense as we have been talking about changing and shifting money mindsets, ensuring that, um, by the way, this is my charm bag group number two, just so you know what the noise is, um, just overall changing how you feel about moving forward financially and what type of tactics that you are going to apply and what type of tactics that you're going to use together. So next up we have the bird as well as this. I'm not quite sure what this is called in English, but you know, like the steering wheel on a boat. <sighs> what is it called again? And I watch so many boat life things here on YouTube and I forgot it, but leave a comment down below if you do know group number two. So in this bird, I can see here that freedom while still steering in the same direction is the outcome for you during the month of October. You won't feel as though your relationship is like holding you back or anything like that. Quite the contrary, you will actually feel as though you have more freedom because you both know what is expected of one another during the month of October and beyond. Then we also have have, okay, we have the horse right here as well as another bird. So we have a lot of this air sign energy. Air sign energy is all about communication, is all about speaking to one another. And we've already gone into this extensively for you, group number two, the importance of communication, the importance of honesty. And in the domesticated horse, I can also see here again, the sense of freedom, right? A horse is a symbol of freedom, but because we have a domesticated horse, here, I do want you to know that while you are both moving in the same direction, you're still uh, free to approach things in your own manner, but the end goal, the end kind of pin in the roadmap is the same and that is how things work out so beautifully within your relationships during the month of October. We have a little bit more space over here so I will just add a few more cards for you group number two because why not we're already here who doesn't love a little bit of extra tea and information on their relationship. I can see here within wisdom that we have you growing in the sense of wisdom like we spoke about here within the bay at an early Earlier point. So again, the universe is reiterating that this reading is precisely for you and that these messages are accurate. So you never need to question whether the messages that we have received are really real or not. The cards are confirming. I mean, what are the odds that you would receive these exact cards? And we have a flexibility as well as another thing that we can discuss in conjunction to freedom and moving in the same direction, but doing it your own way. So it doesn't really matter how you get from point A to point B in your relationships or situationships. Just keep the end goal in mind rather than nitpicking how you get there. One person may save money, for example, by not buying themselves a Starbucks every single day, while another person may choose to actually make more home-cooked meals or another person may choose to actively kind of like shrink the budget that they have for groceries. So some people want to just cut something out completely, go cold 
Turkey while the other person tends to want to optimize costs or look at how much they're spending on insurance, so on and so forth, and cutting costs there, being more effective when it comes to those types of things. There are so many different ways in which you can both move in the same direction, be flexible about how you do things and be flexible about how your partner or the person who you're in a situation with tends to do their own way of things okay so just ensure that the end goal is the same and that you're both committed to it however you both decide to get there now group number two this is a reading that i received for you i hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it insightful let me know down below in the comment section make sure you leave a little pig emoji down below in the comment section as well to let me and others know that this is a group that you chose and that you made it all the way to the end thank you so much for spending this divine time and space with me and i'll catch you during one of my upcoming predictions friends. Hello group number three and welcome to your October relationship and situationship prediction. You chose the pink pain tarot deck in conjunction to the amethyst crystal. Let's do a quick close up of your stone so you can get acquainted with its energy and vibration. So this is the amethyst. You may have chosen the stone because it is a very well known one, but you may have also intuitively felt drawn to this because this is actually a stone that helps bring out your intuition, your gut feeling, that sixth sense that is so so helpful so often when it comes to love and knowing what another person's true intentions are. So let's move into your reading to figure out exactly what's coming towards you during the month of October. So first up, we have the Queen of Bottles. In the Queen of Bottles, I can see here that this water sign energy that is very feminine, that is very caring, is going to play an important role during the month of October in your love life. And we have yet to find out why. In the Two of Knives, I see that on one hand, there is a part of you, there is a part of the relationship that is very kind, nurturing, and caring. But then on the other hand, I can see in your relationship and situationship area that there is also another part that is a little bit more cold, that is a little bit more distant, a bit more hard to understand, where communication blockages are common. In the Two of Bottles, however, I can see that the outcome for October when it comes to your love life and your relationships is going to be a positive one filled with love. So even though there are two sides to every story, to every relationship, at the end of the day, you both want love, you both want to care and love for one another. I see that here in connectivity to the energy of the queen of bottles and because you want the same things you are therefore able to create a relationship situation that is healthy and where you can both thrive and feel loved and cared for so this is already a positive start to your october prediction but let's move further into your reading to see what else is coming towards you and all the little nitty-gritty details the black mulberry does show me here that the relationship is moving into a space of wholeness of understanding and of caring in a way that was maybe missing before or that you found a little harder to spot, but October is a favorable month for your relationships. The sweet corn shows me here that implementing some sort of ritual is a really important thing to help your relationship thrive and in order to help your relationship kind of have its own rhythm and its own life, okay? And by its own life, I mean your relationship having its own dynamic independently of work, of friends, of family, just your relationship having having its own wave that it rides and its own ebb and flow. For me, some of the rituals that I do within my romantic relationship with it, within my marriage is, for example, every Monday or Tuesday, it's like pina colada Monday or Tuesday, where during the day we make some mocktails with one another and we just relax, we vibe, we chill, we drink our cocktails, and we just have this little ritual of caring for one another and spending time together doing something fun and recreational. In the bay, I can see here that through spending these times in ritual, through spending these times in having like your own little fun, fun rituals, whether it is also making cocktails or mocktails together, whether it is doing something completely different, maybe working out together, whatever you like to do in your relationship or situationship, I can see here within the bay that that will increase your knowledge of one another and also incre increase your knowledge of oneself. So you will understand 
your needs and your wants, your desires as a lover really well. And that is important because a lot of relationships struggle with communication, right? But it's not necessarily just communication with one another. Often we already struggle to understand ourselves, to have the necessary wisdom over what we need as individuals, and then trying to relay something that we don't even understand about ourselves, that we don't even fully get about what we're going through, trying to communicate that to another person. That is hard. That is near impossible, I'd say, group number three. So do know here within the bay that the better you can understand yourself and put what you're going through into words, the better the com communication will be in your relationship and the more you will find that wholeness is actually something that you're moving towards because wholeness is not something that you only create with one another in your relationship or situationship. Wholeness is something that you can contribute to by getting to know yourself better individually. I can see here within the chives that divination really helps with that. So divination, tarot cards, oracle cards, all types of spiritual practices are not necessarily here to just say, oh, this is what your future is going to look like. It is often holding a mirror up to yourself, reflecting, figuring out exactly where you can grow, what areas of life that you have been neglecting, and actually receiving a divine wisdom that can help you implement positive changes, that can help support you, that can help give you courage, support, love, all of the things that you otherwise may be missing out on if it wasn't for divination practices. So maybe even purchasing your own tarot deck that you can use as a ritual with your partner, that could be a great thing. I love to do energy. Ooh, okay, we have a card that popped right out of the pile. Let me just pick up that card. Um, one of the things that I really love to do in my relationship is also make sure that we do some energy healing together and that we pull tarot cards with one another. I can see here within called that soul gifts and training, it's time for you to step up. Okay, so soul gifts and training, is something that you can do together. As I literally just spoke to you about, I love to do some energy healing with my husband, with my partner. I love to engage in pulling tarot cards together and just making that a sacred ritual to strengthen the relationship, to strengthen the love that we have here in the two of bottles. So that's something I would recommend that you do as well. But in called, I can also see here that that is a way for you to train your soul gifts, the things that you're really good at. So if you're a very empathetic person, then having rituals with one another where you take care of the other person is a great way how you can exercise that empathy. If, for example, your partner is a very driven person, making sure that you stick to these reoccurring rituals can truly help create a routine that you can count on and that gives the relationship some stability. So stability is very important and will help you to step things up in your relationship in a positive sense, in a sense that creates a relationship that you can not only count on, but that you know exactly where you stand in. Next, we have the double mission. So in the double mission, I can see that you are both on two completely different missions, but you have your own ways of serving the world. And in your relationship or situationship, this is a type of thing that needs a lot of understanding. So you may, for example, be a very giving, caring, empathetic person who always gives other people as much as they can of themselves. Maybe you give other people the time of day a lot more than your partner. Maybe you're the type of person who gives a lot more money, who gives a lot more of your energy to others whenever you can, because that is just what you're able to provide. So you're going to do it in whichever way, shape or form. doesn't matter if that is helping another person financially or helping them out physically, emotionally, that is maybe who you are and your partner may have a completely different way of kind of completing or serving the world by being themselves. For them, it could be pushing a business forward. For them, it could be, for example, divination, helping other people reach their highest potential by being a bit more of a pusher while you're maybe a bit more of a nurturer. But overall, I can see here for October in the Queen of Bottles and the Two of Knives that the edge of the sword is definitely tilted more towards the feminine and empathetic side rather than the side that is more pushy, but that always changes. I mean, relationships have their ups, their downs, their times where they're more loving and times where they're a bit more uh, engaged in pushiness. I can see here in all paths lead home to remember that if you both have the same end goal, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what path that you take or what path that you're on. Just follow 
follow your intuition on it and also allow for your partner, the person who you're in a situationship with, to take their own path towards home, to take their own path towards your joint goal. So if they, for example, need more alone time than you do, let them take that path. Let them have more alone time. Allow them to grow individually so that they can bring more to the relationship. And at the end of the day, if you both want the same thing, it shouldn't really matter if you make a little bit more time for alone time for your partner, right? If you allow them to have a little bit more time engaging in a hobby or being with friends or family, it can be hard because you need a factor of trust that's there. But remind yourself here that if you both have the same end goal, then they will follow through with that end goal and if you're both on completely different pages then of course it wasn't meant to be and then there's no amount of steering in the right direction or trying to navigate someone towards a joint goal that you can do that will end up with the result that you desire if their end goal looks completely different from yours. So just giving someone more freedom in the relationship and see where they end up, that can really show you if you're on the same page or not. I can see here within the pink opal that being kind to yourself is important, especially when you notice that maybe with certain aspects of life, you are on two completely different pages of course you're two different people your relationship and your situationship is as unique as you are and no two relationships can be compared or are the, are the same which is why it's so important for you to be kind to yourself especially in this day and age where we have instagram and social media in general and you may see other people's relationship on social media like for example i have had so many dms about the post that i did with my husband on my instagram if you follow me then you've seen it if not make sure that you head on over to my instagram and follow me for updates but i've had so many dms about you know those photos that we took together and how perfect that we look and how wonderful that it seems but you know we have our ups and downs like every relationship too we have days where we don't want to hang with each other we have days where we feel like we can't get enough of each other and here in the pink opal and being kind to yourself it's important for you to remember that that snapshot that I and other people upload to Instagram is usually like a very favorable snapshot snapshot not a lot of people want to admit that a lot of people definitely do go with the whole narrative of being in a perfect marriage or a relationship but you know that's just not realistic it's not how it is we're human beings we have feelings emotions we go through different things and every relationship has its ups and downs so don't be hard on yourself just because everything that you see on social media or everything that you see in media in general about relationships is all about these perfect loving caring relationships where no one ever argues or no one ever has a disagreement that is not reality and it's important for you to not base your self-worth on whether you feel like you're fulfilling that type of fake narrative narrative or whether you feel like your relationship is a lot more real than the others that you see on social media, okay? So don't be hard on yourself when it comes to that. I can see here in the tourmalinated courts that comparing your relationship or your situationship is actually what is creating the most friction for you internally. The best thing for you is to just get out of your own way. Stop even following accounts that make you feel bad about yourself. Stop looking at different commercials or looking at different accounts that just make you feel like your relationship isn't as perfect or you don't look as picture perfect together as some other couples. Whatever it is, whatever feeling that bubbles up in you or whatever feeling that seeing another couple invokes in you that is negative it should actually be a telltale sign for you to distance yourself from those types of media outlets until you have found steady ground and reminded yourself that reality is often very different than what is portrayed all over the internet which we are exposed to so much next up we have the ocean jasper now group three in the ocean jasper schedule yourself in give your partner time for themselves but you also schedule yourself in and let me tell you your partner is going to feel even more crazy about you when you spend more time taking care of yourself because you're going to be feeling yourself more so you're going to have a lot more of that divine feminine sensual energy about you because it will be clear that like you feel good in your body 
body after you've taken care of yourself you are going to exude a very seductive type of energy that they're going to want to be around of course and that's just overall going to serve your relationship immensely so you scheduling yourself in you making time to get like a treatment a massage to just take care of yourself maybe you just want to run yourself a bath sit in it and enjoy all of that is actually going to contribute positively to your relationship in ways that you maybe did not expect at all so do know here within the ocean jasper that scheduling yourself in is going to have a super positive ripple effect that you maybe never even expected i can see here within the seven of crystals that there is a little bit of a fight that some people may put up when it comes to your relationship so maybe some people don't agree with your relationship or situationship and here in the seven of crystals i can see that you're expending a little bit of your energy focusing on that rather than just being kind to yourself and scheduling yourself and scheduling your time in so when you feel as though you have to defend any part of your life or your relationships just walk away just remind yourself it is really not worth your time or your energy at the end of the day you have to follow what you think is right even if you make a wrong decision in love we all have our own individual learning curves and ways to gain wisdom as we spoke about here in the bay because if it wasn't for example relationships that i have had before my marriage that didn't work out that weren't right for me i wouldn't know what is right for me i wouldn't know what does serve me so everybody has to make their own mistakes and everybody needs to follow their own intuition or their own head in order to figure out when they're being led in the right direction and when they're being led astray there's no other way to learn about your intuition and to learn about love other than through experience so know that some people really do mean well when they're trying to tell you to be careful in love or they're trying to give you advice but at the same time it doesn't really help you because you need to make your own experiences i can see here within the strength card group number three that you are naturally already a very strong person you're naturally someone who bounces back from literally any experience it doesn't matter how hard that it is so don't worry just because we receive these messages within your reading i of course always want to be honest with you i will never create a reading just to comfort anybody with a lie so don't allow the seven of crystals to freak you out or to feel like the opposition will be too much you can get through anything i see that here in the strength card the two of crystals does also show me here that getting through things also means getting to a point where you can let go of certain things where you can let go of even paying mind to unsolicited relationship advice without it affecting you so while maybe on the surface you're not showing the person who is giving you unsolicited advice that it affects you it may still kind of like follow you for hours and days later and just making that period of time in which you still are affected by comments smaller and smaller like shrinking that window as much as you can and that is the goal like for example when i started my channel every mean comment used to really affect me every little bit of unsolicited advice i felt really bad i mean i'm a human being of course it made me super sad and sometimes i would think about it for days on end and i still remember like some of the meanest comments that people have made like right at the beginning of my youtube career because that's when it really like stung right that's when it really affected me because i wasn't used to it but the more you kind of fine-tune your mind to forget about those things the more you don't even remember like i remember the first comments that hit me so much more like now if i get like a mean comment i don't even remember it group number three like two minutes later i'm just like i don't even i don't even know it's just like block and delete and move on because if someone is just letting out their anger or their meanness on you don't even pay it any mind but at the same time of course like those first times those first situations are always going to cut the most deeply are always going to affect you the most and are the ones that you're most probable to remember but at the same time like l allow that to make you wiser and to move forward in a way that you start to just like forget way more quickly and move on with your life without remembering any unsolicited pieces of advice that are really not very helpful the eight of cups does show me here that moving on emotionally is actually the most mature thing that you can do the thing that serves you the most and also trying to move on from any comments that were made within your relationship that 
we're made in the heat of the moment. I mean, we all go through phases where we're angry, where we're feeling down, and where we may some say something to our partners that we don't mean. So it's important for you to forgive yourself for what you have said, but also forgive your partner for things that they may have said that you know they actually didn't mean. The Four of Crystals shows me here that deep-rooted stability is the outcome for your relationship or situationship by the end of October, and with deep-rooted stability, I mean really understanding where you stand. Understanding what the relationship is about, what the future of your relationship holds, and what your individual intentions are with this relationship. What you want, what your partner wants, and how you're going to push forward together. Ooh, we have a card that turn itself around the page of swords so the page of swords it does show me for you group number three you're definitely devoted to being honest but being honest in a way that doesn't hurt the other person as i just mentioned earlier forgiving yourself for things that you said in a certain way that weren't very nice that may have hurt your partner's feelings that is important keeping your head down keeping it low if you feel embarrassed and not allowing ego to take over and to make things even worse is what I see in the page of swords that is important for you but that also shows maturity and the fact that you're gaining wisdom so do know here that the page of swords definitely stands for you embracing this wiser self that we have for you in October and also if needed apologizing and saying that you're sorry writing an apology letter if it's hard for you to put your words into a concise string that amounts to a sentence in person in front of that person because sometimes it can really just be hard to piece the right words together to make sentences that make sense if you know what i mean group number three but let's add a few charms in to just tie your reading together we have this cute little acorn as well as this yoga pose this downward facing dog i hope you can see it so in the downward facing dog we have an inversion we have turning things upside down so to say and in the acorn i definitely also also want you to know here that turning things upside down and just changing the roles in your relationship for a short amount of time can really help okay so if you are the one who usually for example cooks try and do a little role reversal with your partner try and change those roles that you've settled into maybe without noticing and see how fun that it is and what type of experiences that you're able to make with that we also have the train as well as the sea star in the sea star i can see that there is hope in moving forward i see these two connected with one another showing that hope in moving forward is present for your relationship and situationship especially when working through october in such a mature and caring way with one another so group number three this is the reading that i received for you i hope you enjoyed it make sure that you leave a star emoji down below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here and that you made it to the end of your relationship situationship prediction for the month of october Thank you so much for spending this divine time and space with me. Take care, group number three, and I'll catch you during one of my upcoming predictions. Hello, group number four, and welcome to your reading. So you chose the Shamanic Medicine Oracle cards, as well as the Orange Calcite to help guide us through your relationship situationship prediction for October. This is the Orange Calcite. Let's get acquainted with its energy and vibration so that you can truly connect with your crystal during the reading. So the Orange Calcite is a stone that brings light as well as wellness to you. And it is definitely a stone that kind of tries to help you to push forward rather than be afraid and to allow for your light to shine. So it's a very supportive stone when it comes to putting yourself out there. Now, group number four, let's move into your reading so we can figure out exactly what is coming towards you during the month of October. First up, we have the flute. So in the flute, I can see that you are expressing yourself as we spoke about here with the orange calcite and the reasons why you may have felt drawn to this crystal. This resonates really well. Expression, putting yourself out there, not being afraid to shine your light. That is what I see coming within your relationships and situationships in October. So also allow this to be a sign and symbol or foreshadowing of your intimate relationship life, igniting because you're unafraid to try new things and you're unafraid to put yourself out there and also to just embrace the sensual side of you that you were maybe a little bit shy to show earlier on. I can see here within the four-legged that you are definitely going through a lot of fun in the bedroom 
bedroom, group number four, if you know what I mean, and you're definitely going to be challenging your endurance. Now, however you would like to interpret that group number four, that is up to you. But of course, this is a PG-13 friendly channel, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Next up, we have the upper world. In the upper world, I can see here that the relationship that you're in has a future. There is definitely still going to be a connection here in the future between you and the person who you're in a relationship or situationship with. So if you are in a committed relationship, know that it is going to be a long lasting one, a long standing one. If you're in a situationship, know that this person is not going to leave your life for any long amounts or long periods of time. The relationship has longevity. In the vision quest, I can see here that you're both after the same thing. So even if sometimes there are disagreements or you kind of like are on different pages for a while, you always find back to one another. You always find back to connecting with one another about what you want the future to look like and also the type of world that you would want to live in. This is something that I definitely think is so important for a relationship to work. You have to be on the same page when it comes to your morals and your values. And I can see here in the vision quest that this is definitely something that's dawning on you that even if you have times that are difficult for you to overcome because you have arguments or disagreements, as the big picture shows, you still get one another and you still want the same things out of life. I can see here in the platypus that it's important for you to stop complaining and to focus your attention on the blessings in your life, especially in your relationships. So stop complaining about things when it comes to your partner, when it comes to your situationship or relationship, don't put those things on a pedestal. Don't give more energy than necessary to complaints and to things that are not where you would like them to be. The platypus definitely shows me here that focusing your attentions on the positives in your relationship, that is the most important thing for you to do during the month of October. I can see here within the seagull that now is the time for deep emotional healing. And the only way how you will be able to heal emotionally to to actually go deep with your healing process to have that cell turnover be plentiful is by letting go of negative emotions and feelings when connecting those to your partner. And it can be really hard, especially if you feel betrayed, if you feel like your trust has been used or abused, it can be really hard to work or see past that and to move past that to a place where you're focused on healing or where you're focused on blessings moving forward and the positives, but there is no other way around it. If you're only focused on the mistakes that your partner has made, whether those mistakes were purposely done or those mistakes were just genuine, honest mistakes, it doesn't matter. It all affects you in a way that does not serve you and does not serve the relationship moving forward. So trying to leave what has happened in the past in the past so that you can actually heal is what your guides want you to do in October. I can see here for the peacock that it's best to save that for another day. Of course, things need to be addressed. You can't just always move on. That is a recipe for a very unhealthy and toxic relationship. But in the peacock, I see that October is really a month where you need to shine, where you need to let yourself stand out and be noticed. And there's a reason why this card is showing up in connectivity to you choosing the orange calcite and us already talking in the flute about how you're expressing yourself, how you're allowing yourself to shine and stand out. So leave a little peacock emoji down below in the comment section if you're still here, group number four, not just to show me and others that this is a group that you chose, but also to make it very clear that that you are going to let yourself shine, that you are going to let yourself be the star of the show in October, whether that be in your career, in your personal life, whether that be through some sort of accomplishment or a birthday party where you're celebrating your successes, where you're celebrating the fact that yes, you are who you are and you are proud of it. You're not going to make yourself smaller or dim your light. No matter what is going on in your personal life, you will enjoy life to its max and you will not allow for little petty arguments in relationships to come in between you and your celebrations. You will save those for a moment that is more appropriate without allowing pettiness to take away from your accomplishments. I can see here within the domestic cat that it's time for you to strike out on your own and relinquish your over-dependency on a partner, okay? So striking out on your own and not being afraid about what they may think. I see that here with the cat and the peacock. These two animals are fiercely independent and are not afraid to do their own thing. And that is the type of energy that I see serves you in October as well, group number four. And especially not being 
being afraid that you might steal the show or like you might become the new star of the show. That is so important, but it also shows what type of area code that your partner is in when you see their reaction. For example, for me, striking out on my own, being someone who is, you know, on the internet very often, who has an active subscriber base, who runs their own business, for me, it was also very scary to strike out on my own, to let myself shine and to kind of own and relinquish any over-dependency that I may have had in my relationship. But it has turned out so wonderfully because I know that I have a partner, that I have someone who supports me shining my brightest light, who supports me being an entrepreneur, an author, a YouTuber. And this is something that you need to find out sooner rather than later as well, group number four. So don't be afraid to do your own thing. Don't be afraid to allow yourself to be the star of the show and actually the reaction of your partner of the person who you're in a situation with will tell you a lot about where that person stands in the relationship and where their support stands as well i can see here within the azurite that getting laser focused on yourself is actually what you're being asked to do here in october and to allow that to reveal some truths about your connection so the more you focus on yourself in a way that is healthy the more you will see your partner reveal Feeling their colors, their true colors, and hopefully those will be colors that you are in agreement with, that you're not just in a place where your partner loves how confident that you are in the bedroom, but that they also love how confident that you are in your career, in your areas of life that you love, that you're passionate about, even if that means that the attention is solely on you for a little bit. Relationships are all about that give and take, all about the balance, all about the fact that sometimes things will be more about you, sometimes things will be more about your partner and that being okay and no one shaming the other person in those given moments. The satellite does show me here that speaking your truth and being honest with your partner if you feel like you haven't been as supported as you would like to be is an important way for you to make conclusions on your own about who your partner is and what situations they're truly supportive in and what situations that they could potentially still work on. Next up, we have the agate. So in the agate, I can see here that the more that you become clear about who you are and the more you actually let your life be the epicenter of your existence, the more you will see what needs to be put back into balance in your relationship. So I can definitely see that through learning about yourself, you can bring that knowledge into the relationship group number four. And of course, this is something you don't want to do for too long. You don't want to make everything about you constantly because no relationship can thrive like that but at the same time it's like you have to relinquish control you have to make sure that you're not overly dependent on another person that you're not living in this very codependent world where there's constantly this controlling one another and only doing things together you also have to find yourself and find your own independence the amethyst shows me here that it's important for you to trust your intuition on this to trust your intuition about whether your relationship can withstand you being the star of the show for a little bit and if it cannot then maybe you and your partner just need to spend a little bit of time talking about it a little bit of time processing that when the roles are reversed or when things change a little bit and that causes friction how you can better function with one another in those situations and there is nothing wrong with considering professional help as well in the these instances that can literally just help and it's better for you to do so earlier on and why I say professional help and not including like friends or family to give you tips and advice is because they are biased it is always good to go to someone where you can start things on a fresh slate and where you can talk about what you're going through and any type of difficulties that you may be facing in your relationship I can see here within temperance that when emotions are running high you can sometimes try to jump to conclusions 
conclusions too quickly or you can sometimes throw in the towel a little more quickly than you maybe should group number four and this may come from a place of just having this self-defense mechanism where all of a sudden when you see that things are difficult you're like hey no i can't do this this relationship maybe isn't gonna last and you immediately draw these conclusions about them maybe not loving you as much and this can be a self-defense mechanism because you're afraid of it being hurt and afraid of you know putting your trust your love and all of your hope into someone and them having the opportunity to let you down on that to disappoint you so it's like instead of even hoping that someone is going to stand by you through literally everything you're just like oh well maybe it just wasn't meant to be or maybe i'm just not meant to be with someone who is with me or goes with me through any life situation try not to jump to those conclusions so quickly to those self-deprecating conclusions because group number four you are so worthy of someone who goes with you through any difficult situation of life with someone who's there for you through the good the bad and the ugly and with someone who's going to stick by your side no matter what comes hell or high water they are there and in the temperance card it is so important for you to like temper yourself moving to conclusions about how maybe you aren't with someone who will stick with you through thick and thin give them a chance to show whether they will because you may be surprised about how much that person is actually there for you and how little credit that you've given your partner i can see here within the page of swords that you definitely still have a lot of learning and growing that you can do with your communication about what you are going through privately and independently and that maybe you're still keeping a few secrets from your partner and vice versa as I can see here in the six of swords that yeah it can be hard to come clean of course because who wants to admit their faults or the things that they're not very good at the things that they struggle with especially to someone who they love and to someone who you want to love you back and to see you as attractive but actually one of the most attractive things you can do is definitely just being honest and being very upfront about your struggles I can see here within the two of wands that it's essential for you to leave pride aside just as this wand you know pick up the wand here that is mature pick up the wand where you feel like okay I can move forward being honest and I'm not allowing pride or ego to get in the way of me just allowing this relationship to benefit from my honesty, to benefit from me putting my feelings and my emotions out there. I definitely see here that when you have a choice between one or the other, which is what I see in the Two of Wands, pick the side of you that is more open because that's what you will be proud of regardless of how your relationship or situationship turns out. In the apophyllite, I can see here that then it's like a waiting game. It's all about staying positive. When you've opened up to another human being, especially one who you're in a romantic relationship with, it's like you're not quite sure how it's going to turn out. So the best thing you can really do is stay positive and remind yourself that you actually showed true inner strength and that's something to be proud of in its own and on its own and it's something that you should never feel ashamed of and once you've done that just stay in a positive headspace don't feel as though you've just given someone a recipe or a reason to break up with you the right person who cherishes you and your openness would never break up with you over being open actually quite the contrary they would love you even more and they would feel so much more empathetic and understanding towards you now that they get you i can see in the potato or potato however you choose to pronounce this beautiful vegetable i can see that grounding energy is present in your relationship so spending time together just grounding yourself being in a space where you feel like you can just chill and relax is coming towards you in october and in the basil i can see that this is rooted in trust and finding that trust again. So while you're going through a lot in your relationship and situationship in October, at the end of the day, you're going to find that you trust one another, that the ups and downs actually just show who you can really count on in difficult situations and show the other person's intention wholly and fully. And in the fennel, I see that ups and downs end up being like the strength in your relationship. Ups and downs end up being the foundation of that trust 
best because you know exactly how that person reacts when you're going through something and in the future that makes you a lot less afraid to embrace yourself to stand out to just be the center of attention to be the one who puts themselves out there maybe in their career or in their personal life because you know that you'll have the support of your partner you'll know exactly how they will react and how you can then steer things back into a healthy way should they react a little bit shaken or should they have a reaction that maybe wasn't optimal the first time it's all about growing together and finding different ways to handle the relationship maturely and it's okay to make mistakes for both of you so i do see here in the stock lastly that the focus just needs to lie on a joint end goal and on a joint target for where the relationship is meant to go for some relationships the joint goal focus and target is to love one another for some relationships it is to build a business together or to change the world together you know there is no goal that is too small or too big there is no goal that is better than another whether you want to take over the world together and have lots of different charities that you run or businesses that provide others with jobs whether you you just want to be in a very intimate relationship where you just deeply love one another and spend a lot of time in solitude and a lot of time together knowing that you have that one person to count on a very intense relationship that is more just with two people rather than a relationship that embraces other people as well that is completely up to you but it's important that you focus on that outcome together and that you remind yourself here that when you have trust you have everything and trust doesn't have to be lost just because during a time where you were the focal point maybe your partner got a little grouchy or they felt like they were missing a little bit of that attention that they usually get that doesn't mean that you have to throw everything in the gutter like we spoke about here in the temperance card quite the contrary you can talk about it okay you can express what you're going through you can express why it is important for you to move that back into balance to focus on making that area of the relationship better and through having that mutual understanding and being able to work on a joint goal together it doesn't matter whether you go through good bad or ugly situations because you know that you have the tools to get yourself back on track so group number four this is the reading that i received for you i really hope that you loved it that you enjoyed it that you found it insightful leave a little cat emoji down below in the comment section you already left a peacock emoji but now you made it all the way to the end and in order to signify that leave the cat emoji down below in the comment section to let me and others know also do make sure that you check out my october zodiac sign horoscope that will be uploaded probably shortly thereafter this video so make sure you check that out for your own personal reading that has nothing to do with relationships or situationships for more insight about october so group four thank you so much for being here i hope that you're staying safe and that you're doing amazing know that i'm sending you so much love and i'll catch you in one of my upcoming predictions.